Before we get too far along in this week's episode, let's do a little experiment. I have in my hot little hand here a ball of Play-Doh. This Play-Doh weighs 225 grams or 8 ounces. In front of me, I have a bucket of fresh water. What I'm going to do is we're going to set this Play-Doh in the water and see what happens to it. Let's do it. As you can see, my 225 gram or 8 ounce ball of Play-Doh sank directly to the bottom. Let's try something else. So I still have that 225 grams of Play-Doh, but now it's in a different shape. Let's see what happens here. Magically, it now floats on the surface of the water. So what does Play-Doh and a tub of water have to do with diving? Well, this is a perfect demonstration of Archimedes principle. And you know what? That wily old Greek mathematician, he knew a thing or two about buoyancy. And buoyancy is exactly what we're gonna talk about today. Today, we are going to talk about how to perfect your buoyancy as a scuba diver and dive like a pro. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome back to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. This is our continuation on the series all about the five fundamentals of scuba diving. We've already covered how to weight yourself like a pro, how to get your position set up so your trim looks just like a pro scuba diving, and today we're going to talk all about how to set up and control your buoyancy like a pro. One of the most difficult aspects of learning how to scuba dive I find with new students is their buoyancy can be all over the place. But if you know anything about our channel, Josh and I are kind of geeks. We love the science of scuba diving. We love to understand the intricacies of why things work the way they do. And so first, we're going to talk all about Archimedes principle and why it matters to use a scuba diver and how you can use this principle to control your buoyancy and scuba dive like a pro. So let's dive right in. So what Archimedes principle states is the following. Any object that is partially or fully immersed in a fluid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. And as I said in the previous episode where we talked about Archimedes' principle, that sentence tends to hurt people's brain. So let's explain it. So first up, diagrammatically, if we have an object sitting in a fluid, which for divers is going to be fresh or salt water, that object has weight. It's going to produce a downward force due to its weight. Let's call that FW. The object is going to push water away from it as it sits partially or totally within that fluid. And so it's going to displace fluid, and the fluid that it displaces also has weight. And by displacing fluid, it then creates a buoyant upward force. That is the FB. So that's the first part of this that we need to understand. The next portion of this to understand is if we increase the size of this object, i.e. it has more volume, it will displace more water. And therefore, the weight of the fluid it is displacing is going to be greater. That's why something that weighs hundreds of thousands of tons like an aircraft carrier can stay afloat. Because it may weigh a lot, but the volume of the water that it displaces far outweighs its weight. And therefore, it can stay afloat because it is displacing so much water and creating such a large upward buoyant force that it can stay afloat. So the volume of that water being displaced outweighs the weight of the object. This is something that we need to come to terms with because as scuba divers, we can alter our volume underwater to change our buoyancy. So if we look more closely here at the upward buoyant force and the downward weight, or FW, the force from the weight of the object, if the upward buoyant force, FB, if the value of that is greater than FW, then that's a positive number. That means that that object is going to float just like the aircraft carrier. If FB is less than FW, then that's going to become a negative number. That object is going to be negatively buoyant and it's going to sink in that fluid. If the upward buoyant force is equal to the downward force from the weight of the object, then that is what we consider neutral buoyancy. Now, neutral buoyancy is something that as divers we're always trying to achieve. But as a diver, we need to master all three phases of buoyancy, not just concentrate fully on neutral buoyancy. 
But let's jump back and take a look at the experiment that we did at the start of this episode. We dropped a 225 gram ball of Play-Doh into water and it sank to the bottom. We then reshaped that Play-Doh. It still weighed 225 grams and we placed it into the water and it floated at the surface. And the reason for that is the reshaping of that Play-Doh, even though it weighed the same, displaced a larger volume of water, which means it displaced a larger weight of water than the first object. So if we look at Archimedes' principle here, the amount of water displaced by the first object, the buoyant force, the upward force, was less than the downward force from the weight of the object, and therefore the object was negatively buoyant. In the second one, the upward force generated by that buoyant force because of the amount of volume of water that was displaced was greater than the force from the weight of the object and therefore it floated to the surface. Let's apply these principles to us as scuba divers and learn about the three phases of buoyancy and how we can perfect them. So in our previous episodes all about weighting and trim position, both Josh and I talked about things that are non-changeable during a dive. Non-changeable items would be the gear you're wearing, particularly what kind of exposure protection are you wearing, are you wearing a wetsuit, how thick is that wetsuit, what, what, how many millimeters of neoprene are you wearing, are you wearing a dry suit. Those things are going to change your buoyancy characteristics. We also talked about things that are going to change during the dive, changeable things, such as your consumption of gas from your cylinder. As you consume gas from your cylinder, your cylinder is going to become lighter, whether that be a steel or an aluminum cylinder, the gas in there has weight and it will become lighter. It's going to change your buoyancy characteristics and we need to account for that based on our initial weighting, which we've covered. And since today we're talking about Archimedes principle and how that relates to buoyancy, there are some other changeable things that we as divers can perform to adjust our buoyancy during a dive. The two main ways that we as divers can change our buoyancy characteristics while underwater or at the surface are using either our BCD, or if you're wearing a dry suit, you can also change your buoyancy via the dry suit. And that is by adding or subtracting air, i.e. adding volume or removing volume from your BCD or your dry suit. The second method that we're going to use is breathing, breath control, and lung volume. So those are the two main mechanisms that we as divers are going to adjust our buoyancy during a dive. However, one quick counterpoint. If you are a rebreather diver, which I am, you cannot change your buoyancy by breath control on a rebreather. And that's a whole different topic. So I have right here my trusty Aqualung Axiom BCD. So let's first talk about positive buoyancy. To me as an instructor, that is possibly the most important form of buoyancy for you to learn as a diver. If you cannot make yourself float at the surface, particularly during a stressful or an uncomfortable event, that could mean the difference between life and death. So your ability to make yourself positively buoyant and float at the surface and remain there in a safe fashion is utmost to know first off. And so we taught you right off the get-go, two main mechanisms of adding air to your BCD is through your power inflation button, so you can do that manually, or we also have an oral inflate option where we can add air to our BCD from our own lungs. Another option is to simply remove weights in the event of an emergency and do a weight drop. Well, wait a second, Lyle, you said that volume is definitely more important than weight. By removing my weights and getting rid of that weight, Let's go back to looking at Archimedes' principle. If I decrease the downward force, the FW, because of weight, then it ultimately increases the upward buoyant force on me and allows me to stay positively buoyant at the surface. Now also, it is possible to make yourself positively buoyant underwater, but we need to do that very carefully because as we know, we want to control our ascent to the surface. We never want to have an uncontrolled ascent to the surface. In my classes, my teaching, I want my students to swim their gear to the surface 
and then make themselves positively buoyant or swim themselves up to the level of their safety stop, achieve neutral buoyancy so they can stay at that safety stop and then swim themselves up to the surface. Then let's talk about the opposite, negative buoyancy. We need to be able to control our negative buoyancy also, otherwise how are we ever going to descend during the initial portion of a dive or if we want to descend from one level to the next while we're underwater. To start the descent, I'm going to begin that by carefully deflating my BCD, decreasing the volume of my BCD, therefore that decreases the upward buoyant force on me because I've decreased my volume, and I'm also going to fully exhale to begin my descent. Again, I'm decreasing my lung volume, decreasing the buoyant force that's on me to allow me to begin to descend. But we need to control the rate of our descent also. As you're aware from your dive physics, with increasing depth comes increasing pressure. The gear that we're wearing, if we have neoprene in our wetsuit, even our dry suit, will gradually become compressed and we're going to begin to sink faster and faster and faster. Therefore, we need to use various mechanisms to slow that descent and remain in control. And our goal here at Everything is Scuba is once we've covered the five basic fundamentals of scuba diving, we then are going to plan to walk you through each step of a dive and how all five fundamentals come into play during the descent during your actual dive, during your ascent back to the surface. Then comes what divers believe is their holy grail, neutral buoyancy. How do we get to a point where we're able to remain at that exact depth throughout the dive without rising in or sinking in the water column? It is one of the most difficult things for new divers to achieve, to learn to exactly manage their volume to maintain their depth. So when I was a young kid in Scotland growing up, my grandma, I called her my nana, she had a really, really old television. And it was so old that it only had a dial in the front of it, had the little rabbit ears on top. And to get it to turn to the correct channel, there was a big dial on the outside that you would click around until you could kind of start to see some fuzziness of that channel. Then in the center of that, there was a smaller dial that you would rotate slowly and finally the channel would appear. And I know what a lot of you out there are thinking right now is like, well, I lost it. What, what the hell does a television set have to do with scuba diving? What it has to do with, in terms of buoyancy, I think of buoyancy in two ways. There is the course control of our buoyancy which is that big outer ring getting close to the channel that I want to select. And then we have the fine tuning control of our buoyancy, which is that little ring in the middle. Let me explain. The course control of buoyancy is achieved through your BCD or your dry suit. If you're wearing a BCD as you're descending or if you want to arrest the descent, and want to remain close to neutrally buoyant, you're going to need to add air into your BCD to increase the volume of your BCD to get close to that neutral buoyancy. If you're wearing a dry suit, you're going to have a valve in the center of your dry suit and many uh, dry suit divers will add air into their dry suit via that method to start to increase their dry suit volume to have the same effect that their BCD would. The fine tune control to just perfect that buoyancy is through breath control and lung volume. Deciding how much air to let in and out of our lungs eventually is going to be the main determining factor on our position within the water once we have the course control set. Obviously we never hold that lung volume as we're beginning to ascend because as we know expansion will occur, we could cause injuries. But through fine-tuned control of your breathing and breath control, that is the secret to really perfecting your buoyancy. Now that we've learned about Archimedes' principle and how it applies to you as a scuba diver, let's check out the practical skills involved in perfecting your neutral buoyancy. Let's go get underwater. I want you to click right here, check out the next video so you can perfect your buoyancy and scuba dive just like a pro. As always, thanks for watching friends and dive safely.